Full disclaimer, I am gonna say it loud and I'm gonna say it proud. I read Hi everyone, it's Carrie. Welcome to the video. Uh, today, you saw the title, we are talking about books that can help get you through a long haul flight because I was just on one yesterday. I don't know why I decided to film this vlog today because I am jet lagged. I'm also suffering from tangent, but I'm suffering from something called cyber sickness, which I didn't know was a real thing. And it's something that I have had sporadically throughout my life. The world is spinning and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> um, so I decided to talk to you instead. I'm going to be talking about a ton of different books in a very scattered way. Just books that I think can really help pass the time, grab your attention. But first I want to give a shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. Squarespace just gives you all the tools that you need to make a beautiful online presence, whether that is you want to open a shop, um, you want to have some kind of community platform, you want to just blog or have a place for your writing. Um, they have really easy free layouts that you can use. Um, so if you don't have any technical skills, you can still make a really beautiful professional website. They have really cool features like linking your social accounts. Um, there is a comment section you can manage comments and have different levels for like subscribers it's just a really wonderful system so if you are looking to start your own website you can go right now to squarespace.com and have a free trial and if you like how it looks how it feels you can go to squarespace.com slash carrie can read and you can get 10 percent off of your first website or domain so definitely check them out thank you so much squarespace that information will be down below but let's jump in to the list, I'm going to be talking like mad. The first genre um, is new to me. As you guys know, I am brand new to the romance world. For some reason, I just always thought that I wasn't gonna be into them. Um, and I read one and it changed my mind. And I actually read this on an airplane as well. Um, and that is Red, White and Royal Blue, which I think they're making a movie of and they just, announced the casting of the two main characters. I heard about this very late, um, but yeah, Red, White, and Royal Blue. What is it about really quickly? It is a romantic comedy set in present day, but the United States elected a female president who has adult children. And so the story follows um, her like 20 something year old son who is kind of like our royalty. He's very handsome and so he's always in like Teen Vogue or like all of those like pop sugar tabloid magazines and stuff. Um, him and his sister are very much like celebrities. He has a little bit of beef with the Prince of England, who in his own right is also in the tabloids, a young hot thing, you know. They have a little run-in at a political event and in order to do damage control, they need to pretend that they are friends. So it's not fake dating, it's fake friendship and it of course evolves into something more and I just thought it was so hilarious. On my second read, it was definitely like a lot of cringe moments, but upon my first read, it was just so funny. It is so over the top and the way that they talk is so funny. Um, it was just a really good time and it passed the time very quickly. So highly recommend. These feel like you're watching a rom-com, but they take significantly longer to consume. So when you might be watching two to three movies on a flight. Instead, you can just read one book and it's great. So Red, White and Royal Blue, absolutely. What did I read most recently on the plane? Um, that would be The Charm Offensive, which um, I talked about in my May reads if you wanna learn more about it. It has to do with a like reality TV dating show akin to The Bachelor, um, but it actually follows mostly behind the scenes what goes on between a producer and the bachelor um it was cute wasn't my favorite but it passed the time on an airplane i tested it for you it was a good read for the flight and then my final one for the romance section is the hating game and this is the silliest book like it is completely illogical over the top 
these adults would not act like this, I hope. It is about two co-workers who don't get along, they always, always fight, and then just to aggravate them more, there is now a new position that both of them are competing for in their company, um, and everything goes awry. I won't say more than that, but it is just very smutty and stupid, and I read it in one shot. Like, just full disclaimer, it's silly. It's a silly, silly book, but it'll do the job, I promise you. <laughs> Next genre. So, before I ever read romances, I was a thriller girl. I was raised on Agatha Christie. Um, I have always loved thrillers, and so those really suck me in and really help pass the time. Full disclaimer, I am gonna say it loud and I'm gonna say it proud. I read Dan Brown. The Da Vinci Code, Inferno, what are all the other ones? People love to hate Dan Brown, but honestly, his books are just made for airplanes. Something about them get me. I don't care if it's historically inaccurate. I don't, you know, I, mm, I read Dan Brown exclusively on flights and you know what? They work. So I'm going to just put that out there. If you haven't read The Da Vinci Code, if you haven't read Inferno, Inferno is kind of, uh, maybe don't read Inferno. I read Inferno pre-2020. I'll think of, mm, maybe don't. <laughs> Maybe don't read it for now. Dan Brown. Just putting it out there. If you like reading physical books, I guarantee you can find Dan Brown in any airport bookstore. So, there you go. But please don't judge me. My other thrillers are much less contested, much less hated. Number one being The Likeness by Tana French. I love Tana French. She is an Irish author who is best known for her Dublin Murder Squad series and while it is a series you actually don't need to read them all they're all very very different first book in the series was terrifying um literally had me in some scenes feeling very scared and like i had to put the book down and look around however the first one and then like the third fourth fifth sixth one um all get really dark. They touch on like really dark subjects or I didn't like the ending. But the one that I'm recommending, The Likeness, it's more eerie than anything. And this also feels most like, um, kind of like a classic, more Agatha Christie-esque thriller because there's just this element of this could not happen in real life, but you're still drawn in. Um, so what happens is there is a woman who was found murdered and the squad is brought in to investigate. But the catch is one of the detectives on the squad happens to look exactly like the victim, like doppelganger, to a T, it's eerie, it's weird. This, the victim lived with a bunch of her friends in this house and the detectives are pretty sure that one of the friends has to be guilty. Like there's just something wrong going on in that house. They're going to take advantage of the fact that the friends think that the victim is just missing. They don't know that she has died yet. So they take their detective who looks exactly like her and plants her in the house. Like I said, that element of there's no way that that could possibly happen, and also that's probably illegal, but um, I just thought that it was a really great thriller and I really enjoyed it. So if you're looking for a kind of eerie murder mystery, there you go. Next up is one that is scary, but kind of funny, but kind of not, um, and that is When No One Is Watching. This is a thriller that takes place in present day in Brooklyn, and it follows a girl who has lived in this neighborhood her entire life, and slowly but surely it's becoming gentrified, and there's just a bunch of white people moving. The way that this book is written is so funny because we are in our main character's head and so she just has this like internal monologue going on that is so hilarious um, but also like the things that are happening around her are dark and creepy but also like do genuinely happen in real life. I don't know. It has this kind of get out feeling where you know something is wrong with these people but they're nice but they're not you know um i didn't love the ending but i thought that the rest of it was worth reading for the kind of meh ending um funny but creepy and 
frustrating, um, and very realistic. So that is when no one is watching. I'm also just gonna shout out the big ones that I think that everybody knows, which is Big Little Lies, Gone Girl, and Girl on the Train. I really love these. I know that ev probably everyone has already read them, but if you haven't, um, I, because they were so hyped up, I wasn't expecting much, but I actually really enjoyed all of them, um, especially Big Little Lies because I went in knowing absolutely nothing about it, but definitely check those out. I would also recommend The Circle, which is about kind of like Facebook, I get more. It's like this mix of Facebook and Google. It is about this mega social media company. Um, and we follow one girl who has started working there. And in order to climb the ranks, she needs to prove how devoted she is. Does she lose herself along the way? We'll see. But yeah, I remember I read that on a trip and it captivated me. So those are my thrillers i could go on and on about them but i literally just wrote down the first thrillers that came to mind and those are them so there you go next section this isn't a genre but these are standalones these are one shot read them you're done you're hungry for more but the story has allegedly ended some of these are my favorites and i'm going to talk about my all-time favorite book which you are so sick of hearing about Sorcery of Thorns. Did you question what it was gonna be? Yeah, no, 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 no. Sorcery of Thorns. This is a young adult fantasy. It is about a girl who was raised in a kind of magical library, and that's all she wants to do is grow up to be kind of like a librarian. But something horrible happens in the library. She is framed for a crime. She has to go be taken by the wizards and be put on trial for this crime, and things just go nuts. I have described it as a dark academia, Howl's Moving Castle kind of feeling. Um, it is just a wonderful book. It's got magic. It's got libraries. It's got a demon. It was just a, it's just a fun time. I think that Margaret Rogerson is so good at building worlds and telling a story in just one shot, but it was just announced that she might be continuing the series, so... But yeah, Sorcery of Thorns, if you haven't read it yet, please do. It is oh, one of my faves. Next up is House on the Cerulean Sea. The reason that I would highly recommend this book is that it is so easy to read. It is so heartwarming. And so if you do have flight anxiety, it just gives you really good feels. And even if you aren't a big fan of fantasy, I felt like this was still, I don't know, it, I, I, I guess it's actually very fantasy based, but to me it felt more just like a cute little drama. I don't know. Um, it is about our main character who works for the government, um, and in this world there are non-magic people and magic people. Magic people are seen as dangerous to society and they are pushed away. Our main character is a non-magic government worker and his job is to go check on all of these orphanages for magical children um, and just make sure that they're checking the boxes. Did the kids have beds? Did the kids have food? Etc. We're not really checking on like are they happy? Are they you know whatever. Um, bare minimum. So he gets sent to check on one of these orphanages that apparently houses the most dangerous magical children ever and spoiler alert they're not dangerous they're just kids um and we and Im we immediately fall in love with them he will see so if you are kind of squirrely about reading fantasy please try house on the cerulean sea I have so many. I feel like this video is going to be way too long. I'll write more in the description box, but um, I feel like it would be a disservice to not mention The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, I read this book a really long time ago, and I happened to read this book and the like seven and a half deaths of Evelyn something, and because those titles are like identical, I have the stories completely swibbity swapped. Um, so both are good, but The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo follows the life of Evelyn Hugo, wouldn't you know? Um, she is a fictional starlet um, who never really talks about her life, and she is now 
elderly and ready to tell her story and so we follow her as she looks back and tells us about her life which may or may not involve seven husbands um the author taylor jenkins reed just writes in a way that is really captivating they're not thrillers i i most recently read malibu rising and her books have this borderline thriller feeling to them where it's like the story is just so gripping and you need to know what happens it is also getting a film i think um don't quote me on that i'm pretty sure um if you haven't read it yet i think that the book is very much worth the hype i just think that the author's writing is fantastic there's just something about reading about a person's life especially when it's like this glamorous hollywood kind of thing it's just so easy to eat up so it will definitely help you if you are on a flight all right so we're moving on to the last section which is series um the last time i was on not this trip but my previous trip i re-downloaded a court of thorns and roses because i knew that i I thought I wasn't gonna get too attached to the story so I could just like reread it quickly and like it would kind of pass the time let me tell you I was sucked in I read mist and fury I guess <clears throat> it passed the time I always recommend having your favorite series just there to kind of comfort reread so if you know you fall asleep or whatever I don't know that's just what I usually do, um, especially because I use an iPad so I can have as many books as I want downloaded, you know? But here are three series that I think, if you haven't read them yet, are excellent choices for a flight. Number one being The Inheritance Games. The Inheritance Games isn't finished yet. Am I still pissed about it? Absolutely. I will never stop talking about it. Um, the Inheritance Games was meant to be a duology, now it is not. Is it out yet? When is it coming out? It's coming out in August. Okay, August 30th is the It Better Be the Final, if it's not. So The Inheritance Games is fun because this is a young adult novel, but it is kind of like a mystery thriller sort of thing. Um, very similar, I say this every time, but it's kind of similar to Knives Out, if you have seen that wonderful film. Um, the Inheritance Games follows a girl who is randomly called to the reading of the will of this bazillionaire who she has never met, doesn't know, and she's just there in the room with his family and she is given all of his money all of it she's like 17 and she is now like one of the richest people on earth and the only thing she needs to do to get the money is she needs to live in his mansion with the family for one year the family is obviously pissed there are four grandsons they have been raised by their grandfather to look for clues in everything the mansion has like hidden staircases and all this stuff so um they all together her try to find out what is her connection um i didn't think that the second one was the best only because i firmly believe that this was meant to be a duology and she was forced to make a third book and she had to stretch the plot in a ridiculous way um so hopefully the third one will be good but i thought that the first book was so much fun um and because it's just kind of really fast paced and it's a mystery and you're looking for clues it really helps pass the time so definitely the inheritance games next up is a duology called fable i love this duology it is fable and namesake if you're hungry for more there is also the last legacy and she's working on a, another book called saint all takes place in the same city world whatever um this is borderline pirate story um about a girl who was abandoned on this island um and she has like worked up enough money to buy her way off of it to confront the man who abandoned her who like left her on the island and i can't tell you any more than that i really wish i could but i can't it's got a touch of fantasy to it it's just got this i felt like a very kind of piratey nautical feeling um i loved the characters i loved the world i thought that the way 
Ah, oh, I just loved it. I feel like I talk about Fable a lot, so I feel like you guys are sick of it. I won't say anything else, but if you are looking for a really lovely duology, and last but not least, I'm going to also recommend Caraval, mainly because I find that books that draw me in and distract me well are books that have heavy world building in them, but they're also very fast paced. And I felt like Caraval was this perfect mix where you get so much world building, but there's also this like really nice paced action throughout it. Um, Caraval is a trilogy. It is about a girl who has always dreamed of going to Caraval, which is this magical game slash festival that is run by this very mysterious magician figure and you can only go if you're invited like you don't even know where it could be um and one day she gets a ticket but when she gets there her sister is missing and so it becomes she needs to find her sister she needs to play the game um the game is all about like is the is it a game just remember that it's always a game but it's like people are dying i don't know i can't tell you any more than this it was just very whimsical and magical and i loved the characters i thought that the first one could be a standalone but um, if you do have time to finish the series, um, the next two books are, I would say, even better. The language, it feels a little bit younger, young adult, so it's very easy to read as well. Um, so it's something that you can read quickly, but it draws you in, um, and it's a really wonderful world. So yeah, I just think that that is like the perfect mixture for a long haul read. So that was all over the place. I hope that that helped at all. Like I said, I'm a hit or miss when it comes to reading on airplanes. I love it when I can, but like I said, sometimes if there's turbulence and stuff like that, mm -mm -mm, I just try and sleep or watch movies that I don't care about. <laughs> so let me know what you guys do um, on your flights. If you are a reader and if you are a reader, what do you like to read? Um, I am still heavy on the thrillers and the fantasy, but yeah, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this list. I hope that if you have any summer plans um, and any summer flights, I hope that everything goes well. I hope that you don't miss any flights. I hope that you don't have to reschedule anything. I hope that you have zero turbulence wonderful times. <laughs> um, yeah, I am going to take a nap and further aggravate my jet lag symptoms. Um, but I will see you guys next time. I am, I'm kind of in a reading slump, um, which is frustrating to say the least. So we'll see what my June reading wrap up is like, but I've got some videos coming up um, that I'm excited about and I will talk to you then. So. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this once again. You can go to squarespace.com to have your free trial, test it out, and then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Carrie Can Read for 10% off of your first domain or website. So thank you again to Squarespace, link will be down below, and I will catch you guys next time. I might have to take another week just because I don't know how fast I can edit with my whole vertigo thing whenever I look at a screen going on. i um, trying to get that under control, but yeah, I am wishing you all well. Thank you guys for being very patient with me as I fumble around with traveling and trying to schedule things. So yes. Okay. I will catch you guys next time. Thank you always. Bye.